Hi, and welcome to a special Xcode programming tutorial. And today, rather than looking at a specific part of Objective-C programming, or a specific part of iOS, I'm going to be teaching you a bit about debugging in Xcode. So I'm sure you've had a time where you've had a project that's crashed, or you've received error messages, and you don't quite understand what they mean, or how to fix the problem. Well, today I'm going to show you the top five ways to find and fix errors. So, let's get started. I've already got this application that I've created, and it's a very basic application, the purpose of which is to share items to Facebook, Twitter, and so on. There's only a few lines of code, so it's not too difficult to find the error, but it is a good proof of concept of how to find an error if you have one. So that code all looks pretty good. Some of you might have spotted an error. I have deliberately planted one in there, but let's run the application and see if it works. So I'll stop it and I'll run it. I'm not getting any errors, as you can see, no issues. So that's a good sign, and the application loads up fine. Now let's click so Show Social. Okay, and now it's taking me to this main.m file, and it's giving me a SIGBART warning, which is very common. So why could this be? Well, there's a number of reasons, and we're going to be investigating why. Okay, the first thing you should look at is down here in these panels. If you don't see them up the top of your screen, make sure you've got under view, you've got the debugging view uh, shown by clicking on the one with the panel down the bottom. Then we can go down the bottom and make sure you've got the split editor open and let's drag it up a bit. Let's see if there's anything really obvious. In this side, we might have some variables such as text or integers that might show up if there's a problem with them. That doesn't seem to give away much. I don't have any variables named argv or argc. That's actually what's known as a compiler error, or uh, a problem with the code, but something quite subtle. So don't worry about that, because that's not really telling us anything. And as a beginner programmer, you're not going to understand what that means. Now we can look at our output and see if there's anything there. All we're getting is an uncaught, ex uh, uncaught exception NS invalid argument. So what's an NS invalid argument? Well, that often means that we've told the application to do something that's not physically possible. So let's go back into our code and see if we can see anything. I'll hide this debugging view now, and let's see if there's anything obvious. Now I don't see anything obvious, so a good way to go through this is to step through the code. So what we'll do is we'll click down the side here on the lines where we want the application to pause. If it pauses and then we click play and it continues normally, then that line of code is fine. But if it then crashes right after that point, which is known as the break point, uh, essentially a pause in the application so you can see if there's anything that's gone wrong, then we'll know something's gone wrong. So the first place let's do this is at the end of view did load. Then we can make sure our, our view is loading. Um, we're pretty sure it is, but let's make sure. Let's also put one here, just in case our view is receiving a memory warning, and that is a problem. And then let's put one on every line of this section because that's most probably where the problem is. So I've got some breakpoints here and they'll appear as blue things. If you accidentally put one where you don't want it, click on it and drag it and that dustbin item will appear. I do want all my breakpoints though. Now I'll try running the application again. So run the application again and as soon as the view loads, it should stop. But it's just said thread 1 breakpoint at 1.1. So we've had a breakpoint, so it's now stopped the application, it's paused it. It's giving me a bit of information here, but nothing that I didn't know or nothing that's going to be particularly helpful. So let's skip to the next breakpoint, or the continue the program. So you click this button here, and that'll continue. Okay, so that's still all working. Now let's skip to the next breakpoint. So we haven't got to it yet, so clearly we're not getting a memory warning. The next breakpoint is triggered in our IB action. So we'll have to click on the button to trigger the IB action. Let's click on the button. Okay, so we've stopped at this breakpoint. And share text here, you can see, has a value. Let's keep going down until we find something. Okay, so far we've just got zero class. But it does have an address in memory. That's what zero times zero 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 one means. If this were just all zeros uh, with the times after the first zero, that would be a problem, and it would mean that there was actually no text in our text. Let's skip to the next one and see if anything happens. So click the skip button, and we've stopped again. Now inside our second uh, text called text, we have this new memory array. 
we're getting this so uh, known error, but don't worry about that because that's actually not an error. Let's skip again, and it's still all working. Ah, but we've got a zero times zero 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 for our text. That means that there's actually no text. So clearly we need to set some text there. Okay, so that's our first problem. Let's make sure there's no other problems. Keep going, and there, that's where it crashes. So we can go back and we can see the line where it crashed. It crashed at this line here, or right after it completed this line. So something's not right where it's saying in it with activity items or application activities. But we did already know there was an error, which was this text has no value. At the moment, it's nothing. To confirm this, under this line here, let's go NS log and press enter, and then inside of that first bubble type at talking mark, talking mark, and inside the talking marks type percentage at, and then after that type comma text, which is the name of the text that we think doesn't have a value. Then close the bracket and add a semicolon. What this is going to do is it's going to output the value of text into this output area here. The percentage at just means a string. We could, if there was only one string, just type text here instead. But if you had a number of strings that you wanted to uh, log, and it's known as logging when we put it into this console area, then you could just do percentage at, percentage at, comma, and then all of the names of your text. Uh, for an integer, for example, it's percentage D. I'll show you how to work out what percentage symbol you need for your specific type of variable in a moment. Let's run the application now. But rather than bothering to go through and delete all these breakpoints, because we might need them later, up at the top next to the status activity indicator, click on the breakpoints button. You'll notice all your breakpoints go grey, and that just indicates that they're there, but they're not going to do anything because we've set them to be inactive for this application. Now let's click show social, and before it crashes we can see it's logged something. So it's logged the value null. So we never set the text to be null, and if it says null in brackets, that means that there is no value. So our suspicions are right, and we just haven't set the NS string. Although in this application it's probably obvious to you, yes, we haven't set the NS string, if you had a much larger application and you couldn't, uh, and it was too difficult to go through all of your different files to determine whether or not you've set the value of a, uh, a variable, this is a much easier way to do it. So let's set the value to something, so I'll just set it to high, and we'll see if that works. If I run the application now, and click show social, it should hopefully work. As you can see, it does. And now it's logging the word hi, which is what we wanted it to. Uh, so that's all worked. You'll know there's notice another thing that it's logged, and Xcode's logged this automatically, is the uh, registering unknown app identifier mobile email. So, or mobile mail, rather. So that just means that the iOS simulator hasn't heard of mail before. That isn't an error, and it's not causing any problems. And if we look at the, this log, it's saying launch services, which means it's something to do with the iOS simulator and probably won't occur on a device. If you are testing your application on a device and you want to see its log, make sure you have it plugged in and you click Run from Xcode, rather than clicking on the app icon on your phone. Otherwise, it won't log anything to this output console. So there's a few other things I want to show you. Firstly, as I promised, I'll show you how to check what percentage you need, which will also explain something interesting about some error messages. So I know that to log uh, a string or text, I do percentage at. But if I didn't, I could just put any percentage, so let's do percentage D. And I'm getting this warning, but rather than being the normal yellow warning with an exclamation mark, it's a yellow triangle with a circle. And I've got these red underlines. Let's see what happens when I click on the yellow triangle. So I'll delete all my breakpoints first so they're not in the way. So click on each one and then drag it away. And once I've done that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the yellow triangle and see what the error message is or warning. So if I click on it now, it says format specifies type int, but the argument has type in a string. Essentially what that is saying is percentage D means that I should be outputting a int or a number, but this is clearly text, so why would I do percentage D? It's actually given me some advice. It has said replace percentage D with percentage at, which is what it thinks is the best option. I'll double click on that and it will replace it for me, and now I've got no errors or warnings. Sometimes that advice won't work and it'll just create more errors, and that means that you've got a more fundamental problem. 
but often that is a good way to find a bug. There are other times though where you might uh, get an error or warning and it won't give you that advice. Let me give you a good example. I'm going to delete text from my NS array, and don't worry what that means, and I'm going to comment out this NS log line, which I'll explain in a moment too. Now I'm getting the normal warning with an exclamation mark. It's most likely to say something like unused variable. Yeah, it says unused variable text. So what does that mean? Well, it's a common error or warning you might get. It's actually a warning, and what it means when it's a warning is it won't cause the application to not run. For example, if you get an error and you click run, Xcode just will refuse to run the application. But with a warning, it most likely will still run. It might crash, but it might not. So th this means that this variable that I've created, I'm not actually using it anywhere in my code. I'm not displaying it, I'm not uh, logging it, so what's the point of having it there? Sometimes it's best to ignore these errors or warnings if you're not planning on using it immediately, but you're planning on using the string later on. However, sometimes you'll realize that you had a string initially, or another variable, that you no longer need, and for memory storage purposes, it's best to delete it then. Now, the other thing you will have noticed I just did was I commented something out. When it goes green, it means it's a comment, and that just means that Xcode will completely ignore it. It's only for our benefit, to make the code more clear. So, if I've got a line that I think might be a problem, like this line, I can just do two forward slashes, and Xcode will completely ignore it. I'm now getting errors because Xcode's never heard of activity VC, and as you can see, it's actually giving me a little arrow where the error is occurring on the line. It's saying that the error is at this activity VC, and that's because we've commented out the line that we declare or create the activity view controller. I'm now getting two errors, and they'll say, use of undeclared identifier activity VC, meaning that Xcode's never heard of this, because we commented out that line. So to uncomment it, just delete the two forward slashes. If I wanted to comment out a few lines of text, rather than going through and doing two forward slashes for each line, I can do forward slash asterisk, and then... At the end of the comment block, I can do asterisk forward slash, and that will mean that this section, all this section here is commented out. Anyway, back to the program. You've now learned quite a lot about logging, about breakpoints, and about commenting things out, and recognizing and understanding warning and error messages. The other thing that's useful, if you want to go back through your builds, so say you've run your application before, and you want to go back and see what was logged then, compared to what was logged now and whether you've lost warnings or got more, you can go into this panel here. You'll see you've first got the folder icon in the top left corner under Run, and that's called the Project Navigator. Then you've got your Hierarchy view, which shows all the different parts of your application. Then you've got a Search area, and then you've got Warnings. So if I had any warnings, let's say I get rid of this line here, and now it'll give me the warning that it's unused variable again, that'll appear here. And I can organize them by the type, so if I had a whole lot of unused variables or unused entities that all show under this category, or by the file, so these are all in viewcontroller.m. I can just click on it to be taken to it quickly. I'll also see the warning or error in the status area up the top of Xcode. Then there's this view here, and this shows current running applications. There's also view process by thread and by queue, don't worry about what that means though. There's not much here, and it's really not that important to look at this view here. Let's go into our breakpoints view. If I add in a breakpoint now, it'll show me where all my breakpoints are, and I can click on them to quickly go to them if I'm in another view. That's really useful for seeing where you've got breakpoints if you want to delete them but can't work out where they are. Finally, and importantly, there is the log navigator. So let me run this application now that I've got a warning. And... I've now got the build that I've run at 5.11pm, which is now. It's showing that this build has had a warning. If I go to a previous build, let's go to the one I ran at 5.04, there were no errors, and these were all the messages that were received, and no errors. I can just go on all to see everything. If I go to the debug area with this play button, I can see everything that I logged from that build. So I can go back to builds that I built weeks ago, and I can see what they were logging, uh, if they had any warnings or errors, or anything else. It's also useful if you want a full screen view of all the logs from the current running application. You can see which one's running by a little uh, UI uh, activity view, which is this uh, spinny thing. So as you'll see, when I click run, it builds the project, 
and then as it's running, it's debugging, and that will show up here. So currently, I haven't logged anything, but if I uh, were to go into the iOS simulator and click Show Social, it's now shown the two logs, and it's also shown them in the output. But if I wanted to then run the application again, and wanted to go back to this build, I could easily go and see it. So, that's the basics of debugging in Xcode. A few things to note that will commonly cause bugs. One is if you're using something like an uh, in-app email and you haven't imported the correct libraries. To import a library, go into your project summary, go into build phases, click on the arrow next to link binary with libraries, and then click plus and search for the library you are looking for. In the case of in-app email, it will be messageui.framework. Then in your view controller.h or m, you need to go uh, underneath hashtag import, go hashtag import, triangular brackets, and then the name of the message you are the framework, which in my case is message UI slash message UI dot H. Another common bug which will not come up in warnings or errors is if, for example, I were to go into my view controller dot H and delete this IB action. So I've deleted the IB action and if I build the application now it's saying that there's no issues. That's great. So let's run it now and it'll crash immediately is my guess anyway. Okay, I click show social and now it's crashed, sorry. So why is it crashed? Normally show social just clicking on it would do nothing because I don't have an IB action hooked up to it. I've deleted the IB action from viewcontroller.h and viewcontroller.m so there's no logical reason why it will crash. Ah, but there is. If you go into your storyboard or your XIB and right click on view controller you'll see that the IB action is still hooked up to the button. You'll see a little warning message next to it. Oddly, it doesn't show up in our error or our status console, but it is there, and if we hover over it, we can see the issue. We can see it's not defined. In other words, if we, where do we create it? That only really occurs if you've created an IB action or an IB outlet in your .h, and then you've used it in your .m, and then you've deleted it from your .h and .m, but you've forgotten to delete it in your storyboard. If I delete this now by clicking on the cross button, that whole section will go away. And if I now run the application, and I click on the button, rather than the application crashing, nothing will happen. So, if you've got any questions about debugging in Xcode, or anything to do with iOS development, visit our website, 99centsappdevelopment.com, or visit our Facebook page, all the links are in the description or comment on this video or message us via YouTube. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial, and if you have, be sure to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.